Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carpigato. Welcome to today. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. I did not expect what was going to happen today. It's just been so many wonderful things that the Lord has been doing today. And I pray that He is blessing each and every one of y'all. Oh my goodness, y'all. This is amazing because God has had me up since 1 a.m. this morning. Hey, Angela, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Awesome to have you on here. I think it's Angela. Yeah, Angela, God bless you. Y'all, I've been up since 1 a.m. this morning, and the Lord has just been having me up with so much knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that He's been giving me. And, oh my goodness, all I can tell you is, it is going to be phenomenal when I finish and write the note. And so we're looking at the goodness of God and His grace and mercies are new every day. Someone on here, as you're watching this, you might need the mercy of God. You might think that you're too far gone past His mercy in a certain circumstance, but let me tell you what the God that we serve, He is merciful to the merciful. We see this in Matthew 5 in the Beatitudes. Blessed are those that are merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. One of the things I know about my God, and I know He's your God too, is that He gives us more than we ever deserve, more than we could ever earn. And so the strength is there each and every day to not only prosper in your soul, but to prosper in life and in health. So many times the limitations of our own mind, the reality that's between these two ears up here, that's fighting against the word of truth will try to raise its head up. And 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6 tells us that we are to take those thoughts captive, that we are to defeat the strongholds of the enemy by Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory, by bringing everything under submission to Christ Jesus. And so I want to get into just a little tidbit and the note that I'm going to be bringing to you sometime later, when, I do not know. I wanted to get up and write it today. Oh my goodness, y'all. God kept me awake for two hours from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. And at 3 a.m. we woke up to get ready for the gym. Good morning, Kim Mitchell. Love you. And so, as God woke me up, He was just talking to me, y'all. It is beyond amazing. And so, I'm going to give you just a little snippet. And this is going to be in chapter 7 of the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease. And it is just beyond phenomenal. Chapter 7 is Trauma, the Curse. It's the last chapter. And it takes chapters 1 through 6 to get to chapter 7 to really understand and grasp it. And so, yesterday morning, I didn't post it because I've learned. Listen, it's wisdom to not always ask everyone for prayer, especially for a special medical situation that you're wanting prayer on. I've just learned to not ask everyone for prayer. And so I knew that I had an operation yesterday morning and I asked just a couple of intercessors to pray. And so it was impromptu. The doctor wanted to schedule it last week and it was a good success. We woke up at about three o'clock yesterday morning and headed down to Shelby Medical. And I was the first patient in, and I was so excited because I had so much favor. You know, favor will do for you what finances, provision cannot do. And if you have God's favor, that is all you need. That's what Esther had. She didn't have provision. She didn't have a dowry. She had the favor of God, and she became queen of Persia. Is that not phenomenal? And so God got me favor and got me in first on the scheduling list for the operating room. And as God got me ready, you know, it was so amazing because they were preparing me. Listen, it's going to be painful. You might have pain afterwards. We're going to give you some pain pills and you can't do strenuous work or strenuous, anything strenuous for about a week. And so I was like, okay, I'll reschedule Pilates. All the Pilates classes I had planned, I canceled and rescheduled. And that's all right. And that's going to come into what God's given me when I get ready to write the note. And what's interesting is yesterday, my memories from 2020 
when I had my uh, lumpectomy in my right breast and you know October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Women, make sure you're doing something responsible into taking care of your temple because God wants you here, amen. And so it was in 2020 that I saw the car tag for two weeks, no pain. It was in my memories yesterday from October the 23rd that within a week I saw no pain, a personalized tag for two weeks. And in October 2020, on October the 29th, I had my surgery, the lumpectomy. And so yesterday, four years later, I had another surgery, impromptu, and you know what? They were saying it's gonna be painful. They prescribed me pain medicine, and they gave me my first pain pill and post-op in the recovery room. And you know what? I got my prescription filled, but y'all, I had no pain. And I thought it was absolutely crazy that in my memories yesterday morning, the day that I was having my surgery, there was the Facebook post that I had seen, the personalized tag, no pain. I thought that was phenomenal. And so the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night at 1 a.m. And he began to give me this acronym, three different levels from one, two, and three of pain. And I'm just going to introduce a little bit to you. And it has to deal with critical voices and also getting to the next level and also in addressing trauma. And it's going to be beyond phenomenal. Okay. And so God began to talk to me about pain and he's, he was talking about the reality that's up here. The reality is that's up here. And I'm just going to give you a little snippet, but I'm going to be writing notes on this. And so he showed me that pain, the first level of the acronym was pulling the analog, like the log in your eye, pulling the analog that interjects negativity, the critical voice, the stranger's voice, the voice of the world, the prince ruler of the world, pulling the analog. And so it's like an analog of the soul that wants to interject negativity. And all of this comes with knowing the freedom of God to get set free of this critical voice. And also some of the things that I did not bring in that I just really thought about is how God had had me praying and fasting for so many days. And so the second level that God was showing me in relation to pain, so it's three steps. The first step is awareness and it's pulling the analog that's in your members of the enemy's message that interjects negativity, P-A-I-N, pulling the analog that interjects negativity. And I will do a word played off of the analog because I wanted to bring, God wanted to bring analog in there. And so the next one that God showed me for, showed me in relation to pain, because it's no pain, no strain. And I'll get to that, hopefully we'll see today. And so the next level God gave me was praying praying and announcing. And so that announcing is declarations, praying and announcing the intended news. No, the intentional news, the intended news, the intentional news, praying and announcing whose news, God's news. When you pray and you announce the intentional news, the intentional news, the intentional news of what? The good news. When you're listening to negative messages, you're going to have it overtake you. It's going to overflood you. It's going to become a part of your system. It's going to be the log in your eye. It's going to cause you to be discouraged, to be depressed, to have negative thoughts, to criticize yourself, to feel condemned, all of that. Hold on one second. I see Kim Mitchell on here. Hey, Kim, message me on that. That's not what I'm talking about, but we're talking about pain in relation to the critical voice. So let me clarify that. Thank you for bringing that up, Kimberly, so I can clarify it. I'm referring to pain with a critical voice and God's doing an acronym. So we don't need the pain medication because because of the power of prayer, 
and announcing the intended news, the intentional news of the good news, the word, God removes the pain from us. And so the last thing God showed me is the power uh, arrives, the power arrives of the intended, the power arrives of the intended news. Oh my goodness. Good morning, Jerry. Sorry. Somebody's moving. And so it kind of distracted me a little bit. Let me put my glasses on. And so there is so much that I'm going to write for you that the Lord wants me to put out in those three levels of understanding the critical voice, that the critical voice is the log in our eye, the analog that wants to go over and over and over again to keep you in negativity. And you've got to wake up to that. Amen. And you wake up to that in fasting and prayer as prayer announces the intended news of God's kingdom. And lastly, as prayer announces the intended news of God's kingdom, as you're fasting, as you're praying, as you're being obedient, then the power arrives that is intended now. Faith is now. The power arrives of what is intended now. See, you don't understand this. I've been saying this for two and a half years. When you get it, you'll get it. Whatever has your attention controls your intent. Whatever has your attention controls your intent. And so if your attention is always in this negative space, it's going to control you. Just like yesterday when I was, uh, when the nurse had already prepped my hand, which it's a little bit black and blue right now from, you can see where they put the IV pick from where it's black and blue. But, and even that didn't hurt. Y'all, it does not hurt. Rich looked at it and there was a lump on it yesterday. And Rich said, Robin, does it hurt? I'm like, no, it doesn't hurt. But this is what's interesting is once uh, she uh, put the uh, IV uh, line in and she just turned out the lights and left the door open for me to rest. And it was so funny because the anesthesiologist and the doctor and the nurse the anesthetician came in at different times and they were like, Oh, somebody turned the light off. I said, yeah, she just told me just to relax. And one of the um, nurses came in. She said, are you nervous? And I'm like, I'm not nervous. She said, well, you look nervous. I said, well, I'm not nervous about me. I'm nervous about my husband. <laughs> I said, he's down there three flights down on the first floor. I'm on the fourth floor. He's not going to know where to come. <laughs> so I'm more nervous about Rich than I was myself. And y'all, it was just absolutely amazing how it was just God's grace, His mercy, His amazingness. And it was so funny because uh, the anesthesiologist said, open your mouth. And I opened my mouth. And he said, okay. And I said, why am I opening my mouth? He said, because I'm going to put a... Uh, oxygen tube down your in your mouth behind your tongue while the surgery is going on and I'm like as long as I don't know about it I am a-okay with that so Saints I look at this and I look at when you're in that seventh day rest I'm gonna bring the note the seventh day rest of course Hebrews 4 no pain no strain and where strain is the enemy's lies where you're seeing truth reality via <clears throat> the enemy's attention that is interjecting negativity where the enemy's got your attention and he's interjecting ne negativity that is straining that is straining and there's going to be condemnation and with condemnation if you're looking at the truth and you're straining to see it and you're not just letting it come to you first corinthians 2 13 and 14 by the holy spirit then you're going to be open and susceptible to condemnation. There's so many times that when you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you got to make sure you're led by the spirit, because if you're not, you're going to end up getting into a space to where you're going to have a door open and it's possibility that condemnation can come into your members. And we don't want that. It's so amazing because I think there's, there's a lot of medical students that live in our building that because we live right by UAB, and so I think there's some more med students moving in today. And so 
they might be coming up behind me. But at any rate, the, the movers are here moving them in. And I think about that. Isn't that amazing? Because we're talking, and it's so funny because we had Rich's doctor's appointment today. This is like doctor's week, medical week. This is your medical week from the great physician. Because the great physician wants you well. He doesn't want you in pain. He wants you to know the power that arrives that is intended for right now. Faith is now. And that when you're straining by the realization of your own soul that is trying to seize a reality of truth, but it's doing it through the announcement that's interjecting negativity, guess what? You're always gonna fall flat. You're not gonna have real joy. And you're saying, Robin, this is kind of over my head. Well, praise God. Praise God, it's over your head. Because you know what? You can only grasp it by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings understanding. The Holy Spirit brings knowledge. The Holy Spirit brings wisdom. Saints, if I would have gone into this operation trying to grasp, what are you going to do to me? What is this? What is that? What is that? No, I trust my doctor. I've known him for three decades. He's been my doctor for three decades. I trust him completely. I didn't have to question anything. I trusted him. I trusted his decision. How much more should we trust God? He is the great physician, but we're trying to interject our own negativity. But God, but God, but God. Oh no, <clears throat> get the but God out of the way. Just lay on the surgery table, Hebrews 4.12, and let God operate on your heart where you're straining in life where you're trying to do things in the flesh, where you're trying to make things happen. You're not in the peace of God. You're not in the seventh day rest. And it's like you trying to pull, it would be like me waking up in the surgery and trying to pull that oxygen tube out of my mouth. That would have looked hideous and it would have been horrific. But because I wasn't awake, because I was knocked out, I didn't feel a thing. And you know what? I got a God report. I got a success report. You know what? You're going to get a God report and a success report because God loves you. He cares about you. His promises are yes, name men. And he wants you to know that faith is now and you're going to see things happen. Why? Because the reality of the interjection, a negative report, critical voice, that's what strain is an acronym for. Strain represents seizing, seizing tr a truth of reality that announces and interjects negativity. That's what the critical voice is. It's taking the truth of God's word, but it's announcing it negatively. It's twisting it. It's perverting it. That's Satan. That's condemnation. That's the critical voice. When you know you're God's child, you live in joy. You live in peace. You live in confidence. You trust him. You don't worry about it. He provides for whatever you have need of. You just need to get you out of the way. And you just put your hand, put yourself in the hands of God and trust him. Amen. We're seeing miracles. We're seeing miracles now. Faith is now. Get the past. Get the negative announcement out of your mind, out of your heart. Pray fast and say the intended news, the good news. What news are you watching? What news are you reading? Is it the present news? Is it about all the negative things going on? What news are you reading? What news are you watching? Is it bad? We don't want that. We want the God news, the good news, the great physician. God bless you. I love you.